Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You said the mayor was in the bag. Okay, I didn't say that. Those were your exact words. You said, he's in the bag. Well, look, these things fall through sometimes. You know how it goes. He's a politician. They lie. <sighs> Dude. Don't worry about it, though, okay? I do have another plan. No, 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 no. No more plans. You said we had a way to blackmail the mayor and get him on our show, and it blew up in our faces. Yeah, okay, big deal. This plan, this one is surefire. Trust me, okay? Oh, Who says that? Bail away with me. Matt? Bail. What are you doing here? You said you left for a better life. This is my life now. Come sail away. Come sail away. Come sail away with me. Come sail away. Come sail away. Come sail away with me. Mr. Mayor, it has been. 224 calendar days since we first challenged you to come on the Mud Puppet Show and answer for your lies against the citizens of Wyandotte. Now, Mud Puppets fans, citizens of Wyandotte, that's the last time you're going to hear me utter that sentence. Here's why. As we have said for months now, on November 22nd, 2014, uh, at the Christmas parade here in Wyandotte last year, Mayor Peterson pledged to walk shirtless in the parade. Made a promise to the people. Yes, yeah, so but the day of the parade came and he was seen walking a dog named Shirtless, whose real name wasn't actually Shirtless as we stated on the show, it was Sally. It wasn't even the dog's name. So ever since we've been challenging the mayor to come answer for these crimes against you, the faithful citizens of Wyandotte, and Ryan and I, we fought the good fight. We slogged it out in backdoor meetings, backdoor politicking, and at the end of the day, hey, the wind-up political machine grounded all to a halt and decided that we don't deserve answers. You don't deserve answers. What else can we do, Ryan? Big politics at work. D.C. liberals and conservatives stabbing you in the back right here in your hometown. You, you got to wonder, <laughs> is it just that we're too intimidating? Is the mayor simply too scared? Uh, you know what I was thinking? Yeah is maybe he doesn't want to sit next to us. We're beautiful men. I mean, look at me right now. We could be on the cover of GQ, Gentlemen's Quarterly, because we're gentlemen um, about four times a year. You know, and that is an excellent point. Uh, I've been told some people don't want to come on the show yeah. because they would have to appear on camera next to us and their <laughs> looks next to ours. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just put it this way. Not everyone's got these beautiful locks, okay? <laughs> so we get that. But you know, you had something on the topic of intimidation, didn't you? Yeah, speaking of intimidation, on our last episode, the mayor's estranged brother, Mo Peterson, was here as our guest. He shared a lot of information with us. Sure did. Mo left. He was going to go back to his tin shack yeah. uh, in the woods. That's where he lives. He was going to contact us with a safe word to let us know that he was okay. The safe word was pickle loaf. Yes. His favorite luncheon meat. We never heard back from Mo Peterson. We haven't heard a thing. No. What did you do, Mayor Peterson? What did you do to your brother? <laughs> Where is Mo Peterson? We don't want to make any allegations, but the fact remains that Mo is in the wind. So there's that to contend with. That you know, that brave uh, man. I'm so worried about him. Well, you know, we'll look into that further. Hopefully, Handsome, too. Ho absolutely. Hopefully, Mo will turn up. But, uh, you know, we, we know when not to beat a dead horse. But I'll say this, Mayor Peterson. You know, you may have your eye on Wyandotte. <laughs> yeah, buddy. But we, we got our eyes on you. <clears throat> yeah! Both eyes. All, all, all four. four. All four eyes. Together we have four. So what we're going to do, um, you know, November 22nd, 2014 was another day of infamy. Yeah. The day the music died. Ugh. Terrible tragedy in this here city of Wyandotte. So uh, today to, to commemorate that and to lay this whole thing to rest, we have a memorial that we're going to permanently erect here on our desk. And um, that will be represented by this here action figure of the Penguin yeah. from, from Batman. Of course, uh, the Penguin was... Uh, uh, Ran for mayor of Gotham, may have won, I don't know. 
um, well. but but a shady political figure, and that will forevermore be be our um, memorial to this whole situation. Uh, another day of infamy. And Ryan, if we could just uh, bow our heads for a moment. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Hashtag never forget. This is serious, dummy. One more note, um, Mayor Peterson, because of the double speak shuffle that we were subjected to over all these months, we have one more decree to make. <laughs> and sir, that is this, Mayor Joe Peterson, you are henceforth banned from the Mud Puppet Show. Don't even try and show your face here, pal, cause it ain't welcome. Never will you taint our set with your presence. Mm -mm, no taints here. <laughs> Mm -mm. But Ryan, you know what? It's okay. Yeah. Because there are other big fish to fry in this here city of Wyandotte. Plenty of them. And our open challenge stands, not just to the mayor as we had previously had it, but no more because he's banned, but to all elected officials and any representatives here in this here city of Wyandotte. What of the city council? Hmm? Will you come on the show, Councilman Dan Galeski? How about... Councilman Don Schultz, or oh. how about can Councilman uh, Leonard Sabuda, oh. or perhaps even Councilman Lawrence Steck? No, well, well, no, wait a minute. I, Steck's cool. Uh, Steck's all right. I like Steck. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Lawrence Steck, he handles his business. Yeah, he, he does. He does. And you know he what? He does. He, uh, he's actually sliding into the city clerk position because city clerk Griggs is retiring. And you know what, Ryan? Join me right here, right? Mad respect for City Clerk Riggs. Yeah. You know what? You know what? Steck's okay. Steck's cool. But the rest of you, let me finish it off. Yeah. We got Councilwoman Sherry Fricky. We like ladies here. But I'll tell you the one who's really drawn my ire lately. Councilman Ted McCura. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We all saw your little performance over the McKinley School District thing. All of us saw that. What was that? Some House of Cards, poor man's Frank Underwood routine? It's like House of Cards, but it was boring and no one cared. Oh, I've got a resolution. And if this one passes, I've got a second resolution. Although I can't really articulate the resolution. Even the city attorney was like, I don't know what he's saying. But you know my real issue with no. Councilman McCura? It's this, Ryan. He has a war on renters. A war on renters? You're a renter in the city, right? Hell yeah. I'm a renter in this city. Now look, Councilman Makura, we may not be living it up big in one of those fancy houses on Van Alstine sipping on our cognac. Mm. That's what it's called, right? I don't know. Neither do I. I, I can't afford it. Mm. I drink river water. You shouldn't do that. It gets you high. But sir, sir, you like to say sir. I see those meanings. You're saying sir all the time. You got a problem with renters? Well, let me tell you, we're renters, okay? And while we don't live on Van Alstyne, I'll tell you what we do. We vote, sir. So Councilman Ted McCura, why don't you come on the Mud Puppet Show? You got such a problem with oh. renters, tell it to our beautiful faces. Have your people call our people, okay? Well, you know, we don't really actually have people. No. We don't live in Van Alstyne. Again, just call so us. Just, just, just call us, okay? Yeah. Okay. You feel better? I like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I feel. You think I, Councilman McCurry? You think he'll be too scared? I think he'll show up. I don't know. I think he'll do I it. I think he's gonna be too scared too to face a couple of renters. He's been bashing for months. Okay. Okay. I tell you what. We're gonna see one of our videos from the Wyandotte Street Art Fair. Great. And when we return, we have a very special guest, Mr. Lee Markham, host of the Lotus Ginkgo Show, which Ryan and I were recently guests on. Watch that video, hold tight, we'll be right back. I don't mean to get aquatic on you, but I'm Turtlehead. All right, with Mark from Topes Artwork, correct? <laughs> That's it, yeah. Right, Mark, uh, art. This, this artwork just drew me right to it. Tell me about it. Uh, what it is, is it's kind of a retro throwback to uh, what used to be called weirdo art with the hot rods and Ed Roth and local guy named Mouse, Stanley Mouse was a big influence. 
Uh, mostly do hot rod shows. This is one of the few art fairs I do. Uh, the, the hot rod crowd loves this because mm -hmm. it, it reminds them of their childhood and the, the trading cards, Mad Magazine, oh, Famous yeah. Monster, EC Comics, all, all that stuff. What I do is I kind of ma oops, sorry, right. kind of mash it up, and um, you know, there's science, sci-fi, you know, science fiction, monsters, weirdos, hot rods, tiki. It's kind of all, you know, all what what what's the word, you know? It's a beautiful mashup yeah, of genres. Mash there we that, go. That, there you go. We well, you know up. what drew my eye was some of the artwork out front. There It was very reminiscent of the old uh, EC Comics covers, Tales from the Crypt and the like. Absolutely. So you were in the comics uh, growing up? Ah, uh, big time. Yeah, I'm a comic geek. I had a huge collection. I sold recently, which kind of bums me out. <laughs> but well, why'd you, you sell know, it? An, uh, okay, hey, you artist. need a new leg. Starving uh, artist. Starving yeah, artist. Okay. Starving artist. Um, you know. You know man's gotta eat. The <laughs> So of comics, you know, we've all we all complain about politicians from time to time. Sure. But you're familiar with the, the comics code that comic nearly code killed the industry. Authority, yep. Uh, matter of fact, my mom, they, there's that little white sticker that would be on the cover of all the comics. It said approved by the Comic Code Authority. If that was not on there, my mom would not let me buy that comic. And, and this was back when they were like 10 cents, sure. 12 cents. And yeah, unfortunately, because they, they would have all the gore and beheadings and knives and axes and oh, yeah. all this stuff that was supposed to cause the youth to, you know, yeah, of flip out and commit X murder. Just so. like video games uh, exactly. are supposed to it's today. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if I, it was true, there'd be a thousand snipers running around. Oh, I, I would have, I've had bodies piling up <laughs> by this time on my front doorstep. Exactly. Want to get muddy? Visit mudpuppets.com today. I hope you guys enjoyed that look at the Why Not Street Art Fair. And if you want more videos, head to our YouTube because we have a lot from 2013, 14, and this year as well. Right now, we are joined by our guest, uh, Mr. Lee Markham, host of the Lotus Ginkgo Show, and his co-host, Major Vista. Gentlemen, welcome to the Mud Puppet Show and to the city of Wyandotte. Well, thank you, guys. It's, it's great to be here and to see your really nice studio. And nice. Very nice. Appreciate being Thanks here. Thanks for having us. First thing I wanted to do was thank you for agreeing to this sort of little show swap that we were oh, able yeah. to do. Th this is great. Uh, we, we had, we had uh, Joel and Ryan on our show uh, last week, and that's a show that's going to be running uh, not, it's not on yet. It'll be, in, well, it actually be in August, mm -hmm. September, and October. And uh, we had a great interview, and it came at a time when we needed to fill some time, and it, it worked <laughs> great for us. Hey, that, go ahead, that's Rod. usually <laughs> what people say most of us, is we are great to fill time. Time fillers. <laughs> no, but it was, it was really fun. Uh, we got to spend some time in Monroe, you know, which we always enjoy, like JFK did. Sure. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, look out. It's weird. <laughs> and, uh, but no, we really enjoyed coming on the show, <laughs> seeing the way you guys did things. Uh, a little different than the way we do things here, but it was a blast. Sure. And we really enjoyed it, and we were glad to have you guys uh, sit in with us today. Happy to be here. Yeah. So, Lee, I wanted to ask you, um, you, we talked briefly when we were at your show uh, after we had uh, shot about... Uh, your childhood, your time in Monroe. So for the most part, you grew up in Monroe? Pretty much. I moved there when I was 10 years old, and, and that was a long, long, long time ago. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can barely remember it myself. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 and, and then, you know, soon after I got to Monroe, I discovered Mad Magazine, which was one of your inspirations, yes. and Mine satire too. and, yeah. and uh, parody and all that kind of stuff. And, and, and that started, started me going, and, you know, many others, uh, you know, like David Letterman or, you know, all along the way. Garrison Keillor's one of my uh, inspirations. And uh, so, you know, I, it's a nice little outlet to, uh, to, you know, you think of something crazy and, hey, you can put it on the TV show. That's right. <laughs> now, where were you, where did you live prior to Monroe? What was the catalyst for the move? Uh, my dad was a Presbyterian minister up in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and he got a job in Monroe, and we moved down there, uh, and uh, been there ever since. Yeah, no, it's okay. So you've you've made the joke about your age, so I'll, yeah. I'll open the door a little more. Okay, <laughs> you're, you're definitely a baby boomer. I'm definitely. I'm right 66 years old. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was born in '49. Okay, so yeah, a few years after that. Yeah. Okay, so you come to Monroe, and um, how? Tell me how you get involved with the cable there. Well, that that came many years sure. later, but uh, uh, I, I was in. I was actually for about three years uh, when I was in my twenties. I was in radio uh, at a little radio station in Monroe called WVMO, 
it's uh, it's morphed into other things now. But uh, you know, I, I got show business, or, I mean not show business, but broadcasting mm -hmm. in my blood. And even even before that, I liked it, and I, I majored in in speech and broadcasting at Eastern Michigan. And uh, and then I got this little radio job. Well, then that didn't pay very well, so I got a job in county government, and uh, where I've been ever since. But uh, but you always have that little bit of uh, broadcasting in your blood, and you want to do something. And I happened to know the person who was uh, doing the uh, who was charged with setting up the studio back in about 1992. Her name was Annette Aben. And she says, hey, we're going to have a TV show, or we're going to have a little TV studio here. You want to be a part of it? Yeah, I'd love to be a cameraman, do some stuff there, you know. One day she said, somebody ought to do a comedy show here. Oh, <laughs> let me write a script and see what happens. So I did, and we've, we've been doing it 22 years now. Wow. Our experience was much different here. No one said, hey, we need a comedy show. We just kind of kicked in the door and said, we have a ridiculous idea, <laughs> and we're going to do it. And they still don't need it. So. <laughs> no, and they said, it's going to go on after midnight. Now, so can I jump in here and ask a question? Sure. How Major Vista came in. You said you've yeah. been doing it for 22 years. I heard you say earlier, Major Vista has been doing it for, with you for how long, the show? Well, I've always uh, enjoyed video. Actually, the first video camera I picked up was at Roosevelt High School in Wyandotte, Michigan. Oh, wow. In 1968. Wow, look nice. at local talk. So there I we had, go. Yep. It was a summer scholarship program that I went to there, but I've always been intrigued and uh, okay. had my own business for a while, actually. Uh, did video production for different corporations and, oh, okay. and businesses and got hooked up with Lee and we started after he got his first announcer moved, moved away to, moved away yeah oh, okay I said, hey I can do that yep so so, so we've been 17 years you said yeah yes wow how did how you still like each other? Oh yes, we do. We, <laughs> I, let me see let each let other four you. times a year. We, we tape four times a year. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, he's he's essential to the process, and he he's a quick read. With we we never rehearse anything. No. Yeah. I I send him the script. Uh, he reads it. We come in and we do it. And uh, and if if we make a mistake, then that's part of the joke. You sure. Know? sure. Right. Well, it's interesting you mentioned the broadcasting me because in watching some of your episodes. I would watch him and think, he's, he's got a nice voice. I wonder if he's ever worked in radio. And actually, some, your voice has a, a bit of like a Casey Kasem quality to it. I don't know yeah. if anyone's ever told, told you that before. No, I didn't. I never heard that. that oh, I, yeah. Thank I, you. I, I, <laughs> now that you say it, I absolutely hear it. Yeah. 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 And now back to the top 10. There we go. Well, <laughs> speaking of uh, top 10, you do a top 11. Top 11, yes. And this is a takeoff of David Letterman. Well, we do David Letterman one better with a top 11 <laughs> list. Yes, we do. And uh, so we've, we've had those on not every show, but a lot of our shows, we have a, a little top well, 11 list that we do. Okay, and the you, majority of the shows. You guys uh, Yeah, I would say the majority. a clip of this today? We did. All right. Let's now, let, to set it set, up, set it up, to set me, it right? up we, have a couple, we have like several different causes. One of them is giving blood, and I'm, I'm approaching 10 gallons. I, if you can give blood, do it. And, uh, and so uh, this has to do with why you would like to uh, get Lotus Ginkgo's blood, you know, if you needed blood, you would like to have Go Lotus Ginkgo's very special blood. And so that's what we have here. All right, excellent. Let's take a look at that clip. So this brings us to our top 11 list, which is the top 11 reasons to get a blood transfusion from Lotus Ginkgo. Remember, we do David Letterman one better with a top 11 I list. Have. So yes. here it is, the top 11 reasons to get a blood transfusion from Lotus Ginkgo. Drum roll. Number 11, it's imported from Monroe, Michigan, home of General Custer and Miss America, 1988. Number 10, now in the dairy case of your favorite supermarket. Number nine, it's homogenized, pasteurized, and fortified with sunshine vitamin D. Good Number stuff. eight, available in any color you want, as long as it's fire engine red. Number seven, it's recommended by four out of five phlebotomists. Number six, it's donated with love and compassion. Number five, it's refined from the finest Saudi Arabian sweet crude oil. Number four, great taste, less filling. Number three, it's scented with lemon. 
Number two, it's free of almost every STD known to man. Almost. Did I say almost? Almost. And the number one reason to get a blood transfusion from Lotus Ginkgo, it's aged in fine wooden casks. Just like my Jack Daniels. Oh, and that's our top 11 list. Again, we do Dave Letterman one better for the top 11. Good job. Nicely done, gentlemen. So that brings me to another question. Uh, you mentioned uh, you guys don't really rehearse. Um, talk about, I know you touched on it briefly. They, they said, hey, we'd like to have a comedy show. After that, what was the next step in the creation of the Lotus Ginkgo show? I just wrote the script. I came in and I did that first show pretty much by myself. I did have a couple of guests briefly, but I was, I was basically hosting it all by myself. And I found that, you know, in, in talk shows and things, a lot of guys have a sidekick or a, or a co-host and to, to kind of bounce back and forth with. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I really, that's what I really need to do this. It, it, it flows a little smoother. And, and so I, I got a, a guy who, had, he had actually been a guest on the first show. A straight man. Yeah, and, <laughs> and just, yeah. And I got- In the comedy sense. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. Well, that okay. too, that too. <laughs> As opposed to. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with it, but okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we, so he, 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 I asked him if he'd be the, co the sidekick announcer co-host on the show and we do it like a formal announcement at the beginning and every right, sh right. end of every show. Mm -hmm. All right, so the, I wanted to ask about that. It's interesting um, you acknowledge the importance of having someone to play off of because mm -hmm. it is hard to, whether it's in radio or in front of a camera, to not have that sort of instant reaction from someone else True. to sort of carry a, a narrative or a little story forward. Um, so you got Major Vista, but uh, yeah. your wife, your lovely wife also plays a character from time to time. Yeah, she's, well, th there's a story about G lotus ginkgo, and there are a couple of things that, that are plants that are found in Monroe. Mm -hmm. We have a ginkgo tree, and we have lotus beds in the swamps of Lake Erie. Um, and th so you know what uh, ginkgo is. There's a thing called ginkgo biloba. Right. Mm -hmm. So her name is Biloba Sue Ginkgo. She's my wife. <laughs> her, her real name is her Faye. Her character. But yeah, her, she, but she's my she's wife. She's a character. In character. Right. Yeah. So, so because Major Vista was not going to be there that time, uh, she filled in. And she's done other, other things on the show. Uh, you know, some of the, the spots of our so-called fictional sponsor, the mm -hmm. Zublot Company. Uh, she she's she's done a well we sang a song one time on the show so she's she's made appearances there but she never appeared as the the co-host announcer which but that on our last show after all these years she did that this yeah time. I was out of town sorry yeah. I missed you guys yeah and the, the appearance hey, that's okay we 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 were hopeful you'd be able to make it today and you did yeah. so all's yeah. well yeah Good. was it hard to talk her into appearing on camera because <laughs> in some of our stuff I've I've tried to get well we both tried to get our yeah. wives involved. And they are very, very reluctant. I mean, mine flat out refuses to appear on camera. She's done a few voiceovers. Yeah. But that's the extent of it. So is there a... No problem. No, she, no bargaining she, I think she's made? got a little bit of showbiz in her blood. Okay. She, mm -hmm. she is a member of the, of the River Rays and Sweet Adelines right. and sings with them. And uh, so no problem. She loves it. Uh, and so, so she, was, she jumped right in there and did very well. That's what I need to do. I've got to convince uh, Melissa to start singing. You think that? And will then help. I can get her <laughs> slide right okay. yeah. Brilliant strategy. Okay, so you, I have noticed um, on Facebook, you're very much into politics. Yeah. And I must say, perhaps one of the most eloquent uh, debaters, especially on social media, where it generally just degenerates <laughs> into nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where does that interest come from? And how do you maintain such a cool demeanor when you're having those debates? It, it's you have to be very careful with that, and and I mean some some of my uh, some of my opposing debaters have have just blown their cool completely. Yes. Uh, but but you know it's it's a strategy. I mean you can you can do better if you just keep your cool. And uh, I've always been interested in politics and and followed it a lot. And I don't do a lot of that. Once in a while, a little side comment on the mm -hmm. Ginko show. I kind of tend to the left a little bit, and uh, so once in a while I might hit a little comment about politics on the show, but I, most of my uh, discussion about politics is on Facebook, I, and I, I have a lot of fun doing that too. 
Major Vista, you get into the politics debate no. on Facebook? Nonpartisan, non-denominational. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about that. that. No. We were just talking about that on Thank the way you, up. No. Yeah, he stays out of that stuff. No. The major is a man of peace. Yes. I am. <laughs> Interesting. You know, was we, we like to tussle in the local politics. You know. Sure. We talked oh, about yeah. it on your show. We're currently in, embroiled in something of a local a local feud, I guess. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You well, ever? Do you guys have any experience with that? Uh, well, now let me tell show? you. I know that your your uh, little feud has to do with your your uh, mayor, Joe Peterson, it, who is right. now banned from the show. That's right. Is that right? He's been As banned today. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what. We we have had actually had. Four different mayors appear as as guests on the show. Oh wow! Most of them just very briefly. Although we had one of them do a, a whole top eleven list. Um, and of of these four mayors, I, I you know if Joe Peterson's watching, beware. <laughs> Three of these guys are dead now. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Lee! Don't say that. You have no idea the the heat that has come down on us. Now you're talking about. <laughs> But we, it, was, wow. it was always cordial appearances of these right. guys. That's the point you're trying to make. Oh, so you have to be likable. Oh, that's where, oh, that's where we messed up. There you go. <laughs> I see. Dark. I see. But so you had no, they had no problem coming on your show. Not at all. Hmm. And uh, we're, they were very, and I, I wrote material that they would, they could get into, you know, and, and enjoy. And it was a lot of fun. I see. But they got to be open to the idea first. Yeah, yeah so. that's that's the thing. And not scared of senior citizen backlash. You know, you yeah. you probably. I mean, we've been through many mayors. You know, in Monroe. And, Sounds and, like and, three of them are dead. And, and yeah. hey, you know, Joe, a great guy, I'm sure, but you know, he'll he'll be succeeded by somebody else. Maybe you can have a warmer relationship with the next one. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, it all depends if they lie about walking shirtless in a parade. Yeah, but you just know can't what? have that. We've moved past that. Uh, yeah. We have standards. <laughs> I, so They're low, but we do have them. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Tell me, bit, both of you, about uh, about the creative process on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, fair to say, Lee, you play um, at times. At times on the show, like, you did the um, the "What Do I Care" segment. Yeah, um, and then there's that's the whole a takeoff of, on a guy that does a column for the Monroe News, which is called "What Do I." What is it called? Well, but what do I know? What do I know? Is that what what do I, I call? Uh, Tom Trees. Okay, yeah, he's a. Tom, Tommy T. 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 Yeah, he, he does a, a local <laughs> column that called "What Do I What Do I Know?" So I made it "What Do I Care?" Okay, and and so we do little editorials under the, under that mm -hmm. uh, banner name. Yeah, mm -hmm. where did the um, the whole Zublot sponsorship come from? It started with the first show, and it was a takeoff on the on Zbart rust proofing. Now oh, we yeah, have okay. we have the Custer statue in Monroe, and it was getting a little bit green looking. Mm -hmm. And somebody coated it with a with a, with this preservative that was black. And I said, "Hey, that's just like rust proofing." So we called it Zublat rust proofing instead of Zbart. <laughs> well, then the Zublat company just morphed into a a company that makes almost anything and everything. They provide services. Let me, let me tell you what some of the... Uh, Let's hear well, He's got a list. Oh, nice. Okay. And while he's doing that, let me oh, give you, you a couple of those. Ah, uh, yes. The, the oh, Custer statue. I know it well. I know it well. Yeah. yeah. I, so uh, that's a little gift for the two of you. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stuff. Picture I took years ago. Excellent. Yeah, and he's a professional photographer and a pilot, by the way. Zublat imitation bananas, they're almost as good as the real thing, but they cost just pennies more. In other words, they, they're not quite as good as real, but they're a little more expensive. Okay, um, Pregger's <laughs> Premium Beer from the Zublat Brewing Company. Get drunk, get stupid, get pregnant with Pregger's Premium Beer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Zublat Airlines, we haven't crashed yet, and our chief pilot, and, and Tom Gerwick or Major Vista is a pilot. I am. He is a licensed pilot. We went up one time in his plane and uh, did, did a segment a, on the show. Did a whole segment on the show. Which he got which out, we kissed the ground. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, that was fun. And uh, oh, this is one that we we my my uh, my wife by Loba Sue Ginko actually did this one wearing a pink dress and at the time she had. Uh, 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 a bit of a sunburn, so she was pink all over. This was called the pink pill. It makes you gay for a day, and then it goes away. <laughs> well, you hey. just want to try it out oh. a little bit, see what it's like. Gay try for the a day, pill. then it goes away. She did that one. And then we had the Zublat can of worms. Surgeon General's warning, do not open. So we have a lot of fun with our Zublat company sponsors, and we've had dozens of them over the years. You mentioned... Um the the Monroe Evening News. I know the name's changed now. The right? Monroe it's News. Just yeah. Monroe News. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with Mr. Ray Casonis? Uh, very much so. Yeah. 
years ago, um, uh, my cousin Bimo, you met Bimo. I know Bimo. That's the reason I'm telling this story. Oh, he, he wants to know where his Sharpie is, by the way. I didn't bring <laughs> it. I, 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 I don't have it. Sorry, Bimo. <laughs> uh, he was, Stole Bimo was friends with Ray's son. Ah. We were all roughly the same age. Okay. And uh, so we would, <laughs> we knew Ray's son, and we, we knew he wrote for the paper. So one weekend day, we were bored, and uh, we prank called Ray, posing as the IRS. <laughs> and we had him on the phone for roughly 10, 15 minutes, oh. believing we were the IRS. There was, oh. a, there was a problem with his oh. tax return. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Eventually, I think he caught on that it was baloney and he hung up on us but uh, that was my, my little story there. Ray is a great guy and he writes a, a wonderful humor column in the Monroe News every week you should ask him about that phone call Maybe I will I will <laughs> ask him when I see him great so tell me about as much as you can I know there was some like confidentiality agreements or whatnot oh yeah you guys worked on the Stephen Colbert production yeah. of um, only, only in Monroe yeah. it has gone viral and uh, Perhaps uh, you know we felt um, we felt a little little hurt here in Wyandotte because uh, yeah. we, we'd been contacted, we were in the running, and then well, we didn't get it. Oh, so thanks for that. <laughs> but, <laughs> Don't take it personally. <laughs> talk to us a little bit about what that whole experience. Oh was like. my goodness! Well, Stephen Colbert, in preparation for his Late Show, which is coming up on September eight. Uh, he just decided to do this little prank where he, he's putting something on his, his website every, every week, but for a particular week, he decided to go to a local public access studio somewhere. Mm. And not Wyandotte. Not Wyandotte. <laughs> I think Wyandotte was under consideration, we, though. We were. But, uh, not rub it in any but further. They, <laughs> he must have heard about your show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, came and did, he came and did a little show. On, we, we have a former Miss America and another co-host who does it. They do a show called Only, Only mm -hmm. Monroe. And he came in ostensibly as the co-host of that show. Or, I mean, a substitute host because they were supposedly gone, but then they showed up. Mm -hmm. and, and this was just to kind of promote his show. And who would ever think that Stephen Colbert would come to a little public access studio? That was the whole kick that made it go viral. It was a story <laughs> and went all over the country. So we were very fortunate to have him in our studio. My wife and I were two of the three camera operators. And so even though the studio was pretty much closed and locked down for that show, we were in there, we were right, right there. Stephen Colbert is a wonderful, very approachable fellow. And, uh, and, and we, uh, we had a really good experience for two solid days with him. And he brought his entire uh, uh, staff in with him. I mean, everything, the camera people, which we were, mm -hmm. but he brought his writers, his producers, his writers, uh, I mean, his uh, uh, director, um, and security, security. <laughs> he had entourage. everything. And, and it was, it was a, a terrific experience for all of us. And then he had this surprise guest, which we didn't even know who it was until <laughs> just about the time the guy came in. It was Eminem. Right. And Eminem made an appearance and I, you know, we're, we're under signed documented obligation not to talk too much about anything and we can't say anything negative about any of it but i can say a lot positive about stephen colbert but eminem came in i think that says <laughs> it all i think i think that tells us everything we need to know okay. i think the it was <laughs> it was an interesting interview stephen interviewed eminem and uh it was interesting. <laughs> take take a look at it. If you type in Stephen Colbert, Monroe, Michigan, you can find that real quickly. Now he's putting salt in the wounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet the, the mayor would Rubbing love to get in. us to sign one of those agreements that we can't say oh. anything negative. But we never will, mayor. <laughs> <laughs> You've got no chance anymore to come on the show and do anything about it, boy. Oh. But you've been banned. Yeah. All right, sorry, fellas. Okay. I wanted to get that in there. Um, so the plane, Major Vista, mm -hmm. how long have you been a pilot? I started flying in 71. 71. Oh. Did you own a plane? No, I rent, uh, rent one. Rent one hmm. Fly out of Custer Airport in Monroe. Hmm. Interesting. And it's a well, I use a plane as a camera platform. Oh. So I, I do aerial photography. Nice. Oh, that's cool. So nice. it's just low and slow on clear sunny days. Any chance of getting the mud puppets up in a up in an aircraft? Uh, <laughs> Maybe this mud puppet. I don't think there's enough grease to get me into any. <laughs> Aren't you afraid of heights? Oh, and uh, yeah, I, I yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> Even if I could get into the plane, no, no, no. You take this one. You don't, don't bring it back either. And oh, I would. And all that. I would. 
That would be so oh, much fun. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we could come to wind out and skywrite a few things about some of the <laughs> local <Yeah>. politicians. <laughs> Surrender Dorothy. Yeah, you know, you know, we have to do. <laughs> So, uh, Lee, when uh, Colbert and the crew were in town, did you, you try to pick his brain? Did you try to get a writing job on his staff? You know, that, <laughs> honestly, that isn't my goal. I, I did approach him. He had not heard of the Lotus Ginkgo show, and that, that was okay. And I, ju I just gave him a, a card and a cu one of the, we make up little tickets for the studio audience. Right. And I gave him one of those and told him a little bit about it. And I told him that some of the things that he did on, on this Only in Monroe thing, which, which his writers did a great job of researching Monroe and found out a lot about what was going on mm -hmm. here and did some great satire about Monroe itself. Did. I said, I said, Stephen, it looked like you were doing a parody or a satire of me. <laughs> and and he, he thought that was pretty funny. And, mm -hmm. But uh, no, I'm not, looking for, I'm not looking to go big time. I'm very happy in Monroe. I've, I've, you know, I have a good job there and, and many roots there. And I have a lot of fun doing public access. Now we have one more clip from your show. Another sponsor of yours? Yeah, this, this we ha the Zublad company uh, makes all kinds of things, and they make a thing called e-cigarettes, uh, or no, a-cigarettes. I'm a sorry. A-cigarettes. The a, a stands for air, and this will be self-explanatory. <laughs> and uh, Zublad a-cigarettes. Oh, Zublad again. Okay, let's take yeah. a look at that clip. Well, now it's time for a word from our sponsor, the Zublad company, makers of a-cigarettes. It's the completely safe cigarette for the 21st century. And why, Major Vista, is it so safe? Well, it's so safe because the, uh, the A cigarette, the A in A cigarette stands for air. The A cigarette is simply a hollow plastic tube shaped like the familiar tobacco cigarettes. Uh, no need to light it. Just hold it up to your lips and inhale fresh, clean, healthy air. The nice thing about the A cigarette is that you can smoke it anywhere. Ah, it looks pretty cool when you're doing right. that. That's right. Did you too. say smoke, Major Vista? Uh, well, that's what the script says. Well, here. we use the term advisedly. Technically, you don't smoke it because there's no smoke, no carcinogens, no harmful chemicals like benzene, formaldehyde, ammonia, acetone, tar, nicotine, carbon monoxide, arsenic, or hydrogen cyanide. No. Those are all in tobacco smoke, but they're not in these A-cigarettes. Those things will make you sick and you'll die young. Only the pure, clean, life-sustaining fresh air that you find all around you comes through these nifty little hollow tubes. There's nothing to worry about. That's right. Did you ever kiss someone who's been smoking and it tastes like you're licking an ashtray? <laughs> yeah, that won't happen with Zublot A-cigarettes. Nobody will be offended, and best of all, Nobody will chase you out the sidewalk and make you smoke outside. And you will look cool. You can even blow invisible smoke rings with it. All right, so A cigarettes, are those a big seller? Uh, I, I suppose so. They are <laughs> fictional, so we don't have any real marketing data on them. But uh, they've been uh, tracked at all. Low but, overhead. But yeah, they're very safe because, you know, they're, they're just. Uh, uh, they're, they're just a plastic tube that you just draw on and it's uh, nothing in it. Hey, Beautiful. There you go. Beautiful. I think All right. straws, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. So That's what we made the props out of. <laughs> if the viewers in Wyandot here, because of course you guys air on the Monroe Cable System, what is the Monroe Cable System that you guys air on? Monroe Public Access Cable Television, or MPACT. Stephen Colbert called it MPACT. Right. But it's, we call it MPACT. And, uh, uh, yeah, we, you can you can see it on uh, YouTube, and I, let's see if, if you if you if you uh, would Google the Lotus Ginkgo show. Ginkgo is spelled G-I-N-K-G-O. Most people spell it wrong. It's hard to spell, but if you can if you can manage to do that, the Lotus Ginkgo show on YouTube, and uh, you can find f full shows and a few little clips that, that we did also. Uh, not as many as you. You got all kinds of stuff. You got do do radio. We're trying. We're trying to make it. You know. <laughs> yeah. We're, grind, we're grinding it out. <laughs> right. The political machine's against us. Oh, yeah. it's all right. right. We know how right. to rage against the machine, right? Um, eh, it might like, be do your. Seems advantage. like a lot of effort to me. <laughs> you might become heroes. We'll see. We'll find out. <laughs> uh, well, guys, I want you to stick around. Okay. okay. We're gonna we're gonna see. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Before oh, before I do have a little uh, gift for you. Another in a, gift. In appreciation. This is actually something what do we have called here? the you know uh, the Zublat collector cards. Okay. And there's the whole deck of them. We we used them on the show. And oh, that's they're, they're, my favorite number. Look at now, that. Now people people collect these uh, supposedly. 
Okay. But every one of them has a different number, and you want to collect all the numbers. And, uh, and uh, we, we had that as a sponsor, you know, buy these collector cards. Just a coincidence that this particular oh, I don't one know. was on top. I don't Just, know what that means. You, you know what I need to do? Know. That's when he graduated from high school. No, it was after, the year after that, right? That's uh, right. Oh, well, whatever. I'm thinking <laughs> these, in combination with some of that Pregger's beer, oh, that's yeah. a Saturday night, there right? There you go. So, I don't <laughs> think you can get Pregger's from that. Um, <laughs> That's up for debate. You know what? Th that reminds me because I had a gift for, for you fellows as well. Now, you may have to split this. Okay. But when we were on the Lotus Ginkgo show, we were given a gift. So I wanted to return the favor as a sort of, um, you know, the whole Stephen Colbert thing caused a bit of a rift. But I want to heal that rift. See, Mayor Peterson, we're all about healing. Okay? <laughs> all about healing. So I want this to be not just a partnership between the Mud Puppet Show. <laughs> and the Lotus Ginkgo Show, but our respective public access outfits here oh, in Wyandotte wow. and Monroe. So what oh, this is, yes. if we could get a shot of that, that is, I am very much into um, minifigures. Ah, Little yeah. toys, things I collected sure. as a kid. This is a Series 1 minifigure, Garbage wow. Pail Kids minifigure, or minikins rather is that particular line. This is Fiery Francis, and this is a, a dragon child with a, uh, if you can see here, <laughs> a fiery uh, bit of flatulence coming out of his rear end. Fiery and to flatulence. me, the flatulence, the fiery heat of the flatulence represents the passion that we now share between our two <laughs> shows. Yes, yes. So, Lee, I want you to take that oh, back. Thank that you. is for you and Major Vista. Oh, and, um, we'll, we'll pass it back and nice. forth every week. You know, nice. you can have it for a week and I'll have it okay. for a week. Yeah. Excellent. Put Deal. it in your will oh, someday. This is, this Let it be yeah. a yeah. cherished heirloom of your family, yeah. I'm oh, sure. Take a look at that. That's nice. Yeah. Oh. It's got wings, so that symbolizes nice. flight. I like that. Anything else I can make up off the top of my head? That's wonderful. I want you gentlemen yeah. to enjoy Thank, that. thank you. We, we, will enjoy, we will enjoy this very much. You thank are you very much. very welcome. Okay, Ryan, well, now it's time for our newest segment. That's right. We always like to play a game with our guests, guys. Today we're going to do something brand new. It's called This or That. I'm going to give you two scenarios. The only rule is you have to pick one or the other. Death is not an option. Okay. All right, Lee, we're going to go to you for the final answer on it, but okay. you can you can solve a major vista if you want. Okay. Number one, easy one, chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate, no, no question about no it. No question about it. Easy, easy, easy. All right. Next one, you have to choose never host a cable access show again or for the rest of your life, Groundhog Day style, host the same exact show each time. <gasps> Gary, <laughs> what you, one what? of my favorite movies, Groundhog's Day. <laughs> that's hard. It is. Same one each time. Okay. Same one At each least time. we'd still be doing something. I think right. that's fair. You perfect it. Yeah. That's you right. Yeah, we get it right. You know, and, and you'd never die. That's just, right. There you go. Would you rather fight one frog that's the size of a human or 100 frog, um, 100 frog sized humans? <laughs> I guess I could stomp up a little. <laughs> stomp a little. The little guys okay. out. Yeah. Oh my. I like it. A little heel and toe number on their heads. <laughs> All right. It's the zombie apocalypse. Oh yeah. You have two choices. In your group of of survivors that you're in, you could be the first one to die, and then you're spared having to see everyone yeah. else go before you, yeah. or you could be the survivor to the bitter end, oh. but you're still gonna die. <laughs> I guess I'll go first. Yeah, yeah, I think that's easy, yeah. right? <laughs> Come on, kind of I think who wants to look at all that? Then you die anyway. Know. Couldn't he at least survive and like rebuild society? So, no, this is, this is a very dark ta tale. I'm telling yeah. you. All right, and finally, this, mm -hmm. I think this is a tough one. Okay. You can either choose to have your entire Google search history made public oh. for all the world to see everything you've ever su searched on Google, oh. or <laughs> for one day of your life. Everywhere you go, everyone you see can hear whatever thoughts are going on in your oh, head. Oh my goodness, that, those are those are both horrible. Oh man. Oh, uh, I guess this could I could be an episode of the Twilight Zone. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> ah, that's tough. I, I guess I'll take number two. I, uh, you, yeah. You'd have the, the, the thoughts broadcast. I think so too, because that's just for one day. That yeah. Oh, it's only for one day. That's just oh. for one day. The Google history oh, search, okay. that's out there forever. For one day ever. I can handle that. Yeah. I agree with you, because I don't want my Google search out there. No. I, my mother would just die. <laughs> 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 All right, guys, we are going to see a video for our podcast. And you boys stick around. All right. When we come back from that video, we're going to wrap things up.
<laughs> I want to be like that dirty hippie pushing a Tommy Pickles doll. You ever play one of those Big Bertha games where you throw the balls in her mouth? I, I throw my shucking and my jiving from your people. His forehead, man. You got a d- right in the middle of his head. Did I just have a sex dream about Patrick Ewing? <laughs> <laughs> this midget's name is Henry O'Duel. <laughs> my mom asked me recently about your bulge. <laughs> <laughs> Mud Puppets Radio. We do it for the lulls. And if you would like to be on the Mud Puppet Show, if you have a talent or a group or event you would like to promote, and you're anyone other than Mayor Joe Peterson, <laughs> who has been banned from the show, you can contact us at themudpuppets at gmail.com. Visit us at themudpuppets.com to check out lots of content. It'll link you all of our social media, like the Facebook, where you can like our fan page and become our friend. YouTube, where you can watch all of our videos and subscribe. We encourage you to do that. If you want to listen to that podcast, which is (laughs) unfiltered, unedited, and just all us and all of our raw awfulness, you can do that at WordPress. It's uh, the Mud Puppets or mudpuppets.wordpress.com. And, of course, on Twitter, I'm at Mud Puppet Joel. He is at Mud Puppet Ryan. Gentlemen, I would... What 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 is this? What are you, what are you what are you doing? I think I'm ready for my farewell performance now. <laughs> farewell perform we uh we did that last time. Get get the hell out of here. We had a whole show dedicated to you last time. What is this? Hit the bricks. Yeah. Take that low class trash to eye on why not. Yeah, this is Get out. This is mine now. I'm gonna <laughs> learn how to play this better than you. The nerve of some people. You garbage person. Get out of our studio. Gentlemen, I'd like to apologize for that. And once again, thank you for appearing on this show. It's been our pleasure indeed. great. And I want to let everyone know once again, if you'd like to watch the Lotus Ginkgo show, check out, check them out on YouTube. Now that's at MPAC's YouTube account. MPAC, there's MPAC Studio, M-P-A-C-T Studio.org. And you can find it on there or you can find it on YouTube. Excellent. Great. You know, we always do write-ups on our show, so you go to that WordPress blog, and I will have all that information so that you can watch these fine gentlemen on their show. Well, that is all our time for today. Ryan? That's a great show. Thank you, gentlemen. Mayor's Band. And now we're going to go to our muddy moment. Play me a little something, big guy. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. You have no talent, actually. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I'm picking. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Like my hillbilly brethren. Right. Our muddy ancestors. Where's my sister? (laughs) (laughs) Let me get some of that Pregger's beer for you too, my friend. I moved to sell the property for $1 to Coach Light, Mr. DeSanto, or Mr. Morgan for $1 within the next three business days. If that is sold, then it's done. If it is not sold... Then I have another resolution after that one. I'm it sounds to me like you want to get a resolution ahead of the other resolutions that are on the agenda. I will present another resolution. Clear. Mr. Clerk, if you would write it for me. I, I, I don't understand. I, I told you I don't understand. I'm going to explain the resolution to to one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I do, what part? That, that, that's funny and everything, Mr. Stack. But it's real simple. I said no. I, I do like not you're want. Like I the do, man said, you no, I'm not anti-development. Yeah, I, I am anti-rentals, and I believe you're out of order, sir. So please <laughs> sit down. It was a mud puppy.